Hey guys, Lee Mardutzi here and Tristan Brown once again for the Sunshine Coast Real Estate News Weekly. We uh, made our first video debut last week, but I've got to say, Tristan, we went viral. Global success. Wouldn't go that far, perhaps had a virus lead, that's about the best. But yeah, no, it was good fun and we're looking forward to continuing this on a weekly basis. Yeah, absolutely. No, we had some favourable comments, guys. And again, if you're watching the video today, we'd love to hear your comments and what you would like to learn more about, whether you're buying, selling, or just a property owner, potentially a one day going to be on the market. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about deposits. Now, deposits can be a scary thing for a new buyer coming into the market. So I'm going to approach this, Tristan, from the case that I'm a new buyer, never purchased a property before. Explain to me what a deposit is and how it looks in real estate terms. Yeah, absolutely, Lee. So with deposits, again, there's numerous factors. So there's just the nuts and bolts of what a deposit is and why you need it. Yep. And then there's how can a deposit work in your favour or potentially even count against you as a buyer when you're presenting uh, an offer to a vendor. Okay. So a deposit usually works in two terms. Uh, an initial deposit and then an unconditional deposit. Gotcha. And we always caution buyers, naturally your solicitor's your best friend, so um, well, consult any legal advice, advice absolutely. Mm -hmm. So initial deposit generally is a small deposit of around about a thousand dollars. It's a token deposit that uh, to show that you're committed to the purchase. Uh, that's a fully refundable, so if you choose not to go unconditional on the purchase, you do get that deposit back. Okay. okay. That's important. Yep. So initial deposit, $1,000. I've seen deposits up to $10,000, $20,000 initial yeah. deposits. Is there a reason why 1000 or 20000 might be better off? Or? I think it's all relevant to the purchase price of the property that you're, yeah. you're, you're sort of seeking to, to buy. Um, and again, it just shows your strength and your commitment to the property. Okay. Absolutely. So it can help in, it can count towards perhaps competing against another competitive buyer. Okay. Uh, with that initial deposit. I, I suppose it gives the seller the confidence of your financial capability too, as Absolutely. a buyer, to put down a significant deposit, and I believe it's in Queensland, up to 10%? Yes, correct. correct yeah. Yeah. So up to 10% of the purchase price of the property. Mm -hmm. So the bigger your deposit, the more confidence it will give the seller when it comes time to making a decision on which offer to go for. Yeah, absolutely. So that secondary or that unconditional deposit is yeah. generally due within anywhere from two to perhaps seven business days after unconditional. So if you have a finance clause or a building and pest or a due diligence clause, yep. once they've all been satisfied and you're happy to proceed with the purchase of the property, you make that deposit payment into a trust account within that specified time frame. Uh, obviously the stronger the deposit, the better, because as you mentioned, it demonstrates your strength and your commitment as a purchaser yep. to the seller. Uh, the important thing, I guess, Lee, is why that secondary deposit is, that unconditional deposit is important, is because right up until the day of settlement, yeah. the buyer does have the ability to withdraw out of a contract. Yeah. And the only thing that generally prevents a buyer from pulling out is, is deposit. the deposit that's sitting there, which is no longer refundable once you go unconditional. Okay. So that's very important. So if you're sitting there and you've contributed, say, even 5% of a deposit on a $500,000 purchase, that twenty to thirty thousand dollars is significant. Yeah, and nobody, nobody wants to put exactly right. right anyway. Yeah, exactly. So that's Mr. important. Bill Gates, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, well, probably not purchasing something at five hundred k, but um, yeah. yeah. But it's very important because what it does is again gives the seller the confidence to start packing, yeah. moving forward. Um, they can they can move into that. I guess the process that they really have sold the home. Yeah, and I guess for the seller, there's a lot of uncertainty until that point. The property goes unconditional because. Number one, they're waiting on the, the finance of the buyer potentially, um, the satisfactory um, test and building to come through. Yep. Once it goes unconditional, the second deposit's then paid, which can be up to 10% as we yep. discussed. Yep. And then from there, the seller has confidence and certainty that they can start packing, they can start making offers potentially in other houses and really planning their move going forward. Absolutely. Look, we had a situation just last week, a circumstance where uh, a wonderful purchaser, you know, a great person, but had an issue where the deposit just it wasn't it wasn't strong and there was nothing that could be done about that that was just due to circumstances yeah. so they could do a thousand dollar initial deposit and only a, a further thousand dollars unconditional deposit mm -hmm. and the challenge was that they wanted a longer settlement which was a, approximately 60 days so essentially what they were asking the seller to do was to select their offer and for 60 days take the property off the market yeah. with 
the, the buyer having the opportunity of pulling out any stage up to the 60 days for only a penalty of $2,000. Yeah. And as the agent of that of the vendor, we have to make them aware of the potential pitfalls yeah. of accepting an offer with a small deposit. Mm. So the purchase price was fantastic. The finance clause was great. The building and pest clause was great. The settlement wasn't an issue, but that deposit essentially is what scuttled the deal yeah. for that purchaser. Mm. So it does carry a lot of information. And I guess as the buyer, if you if you see something else that comes up that maybe is more appealing, yeah. you could potentially walk away from $2,000. Yeah. And, and there are ways that we can help, absolutely. Mm. Things, if you don't have the deposit, we can put you in contact with your broker or a bank and, and look at things like a deposit bond, which we'll go into another time. Yeah. Yeah. But there are ways and means to sort of navigate around those those potential issues. I had a case recently where there was an offer on a property um, with a smaller deposit, mm -hmm. and we had another offer come in because it was subject to a sale, mm -hmm. and the other offer was significantly better. But the previous contract from the original buyer was just going to make their contract unconditional regardless and take that risk mm. because I guess they knew that potentially they could walk away from, from that small deposit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a bit of risk in taking small deposits, but I think we've sort of touched on initial yeah. deposits, balanced deposits, and what it all means for a buyer and a seller. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a bit of a wrap. Absolutely. There's a lot to, to work through when you're putting an offer in on a property for, for a seller to consider and for a buyer to, to consider. There's a lot of different factors. We're going to keep touching on those each week yeah. um, because there's not just one size sort of fits all when it comes to property contracts, that's for sure. Yeah. It's not too complicating, but if you know the information, you can make better decisions. And that's what we're here for. For uh, Sunshine Facial and Sadies, I don't know if that's the time we're going with, but uh, that'll do for now. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, guys.